Now, what is happening? Let's look at the physics of the problem. When the ice melts, the weight of the oil which was displaced by this section of ice will try to regain its position. So the height of the oil will decrease by some amount. Same thing is going to happen with water. This water which was displaced after the ice melts will try to occupy this space again. So there will be a decrease in the height of water level too. But the ice is getting converted to water. Hence that will add some more height to the existent water we already have. So that is going to give me an additional height. Let us look at each of these differences separately. Let's say the change in height of oil is equal to the equivalent height of oil due to this height of ice. This is equivalent height in volumes of oil this is equal to nothing but negative because there is a drop in the height of oil this is basically 2.5 which is this height into the cross sectional area which is 5 square because that was a cube this is the volume this much volume of oil had been displaced initially. This volume divided by the cross-sectional area of the cylinder or the container what we initially had will give me the equivalent height of oil which drops. So this divided by 100. This is going to give me minus 0 0.625 centimeters. Similarly for water, we have equivalent height of ice cube melt in volumes of water. Which is going to be equal to minus again 2.5 because y was also 2.5 times 5 square by 100, this is again equal to minus 0 0.625 centimeters. So we have delta H oil is equal to minus 0 0.625 centimeters. Delta H water is also equal to minus 0 0.625 centimeters. Now let's look at what happens when the ice gets molten into water. So what we are finding out now is delta H ice to water. Note that this will give me a rise in the height of water because water is being added to our system. So we will have a positive sign first. 5 cube into 0 0.9. This is the mass of ice. We are basically applying the mass conservation principle. This is the mass of ice what is present. This mass of ice gets converted to an equal mass of water. So if I divide this by the density of water which is 1, this is going to give me the volume of the water produced. That multiplied with the cross-sectional area of the container will give me the height of water which gets added. This turns out to be plus 1.125 centimeters. So the delta H ice water is equal to plus 1.125 centimeters. Now, to find the net height drop or the net height change of the top surface what we stated in our problem initially 
to find that what we need is basically the addition of these quantities so that delta h surface is going to be delta h oil which is negative plus delta h water which is also negative plus delta h ice which got converted to water if we add all these up we get it we get this coming out to be 0. Point one two five and this will be a negative sign this is in centimeters if we convert this into millimeters we have minus 1.25 millimeters For the delta H, which comes out to be our, uh, the delta H which is at the interface of our oil and water, so delta H interface, this is a result of the decrease in height of water due to this and the increase in height of water due to this. To state it more clearly, the water which gets added by the molten ice increases the level of water and the water which gets which fills up this space after the ice melts by the decrease of water level is going to add up and give a net result so this is going to be equal to delta h ice water and the delta h of water which is nothing but plus 0 0.5 centimeters this is also equal to plus 5 millimeters this is the answer to the first part of our question this is the answer to the second part of our question